okay, so when we're thinking about an off-grid sustainable kind of a lifestyle, you know, often we're imagining scenes like this, a delicious life in the wilderness, um, being environmentally friendly and living in a sustainable way, or something like this, really remote and beautiful. Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm sugarcoating this because this is the tricky bit. When it comes down to it, for most of us, being environmentally friendly, it's about lifestyle choices, like whether or not to own an EV. So you've decided to commit to an EV lifestyle and all of the environmental benefits that go with that. And there is some form filling out to do. <laughs> and that's why I've been trying to make you feel better about it, really. Because it's quite a lot of filling out if you want a home charger and the grant that goes with it. But fear not, I'm going to walk you through it. Now, to start with, you actually need to have ordered or own your vehicle or have it on a lease or something. But you're going to have to prove before you even really start filling out the rest of the form, that vehicle is yours. So it's going to be registration number or order number or something like that. So don't worry about it if you haven't. But you can still watch the video because you'll still be prepared because you will also maybe need a phone or a camera and you might have to do a little bit of artwork. So you're going to need some paper and a pencil. So in another time dimension, well, film, we walked through uh, the choices you're going to make when you choose a charger. By now, you've chosen your charger and you're going to be filling out your form along with the company. So I chose EO, so I'm filling out the EO form. Um, but they're all much of a muchness, to be honest. They all need the same kind of information. We're starting um, really pretty basically. You can see your details. So, obviously, first name, I think we've all got it now, okay? You've got Forrester, last name, well, that's not your name, but you're with me, okay? Email, all of those things are really straightforward. And on this EO form, we have a save and continue each time we get to a different part of the form. And then you're getting into the car details. So if you've already bought your car, if you already own it, you'll have things like your um, vehicle registration number, um, that kind of thing. If not, and you've got it on order, then they'll just ask you for your order number. And then we start to get into um, slightly more complicated territory. So these first few questions are pretty straightforward, like have you previously claimed? Um, is your address a residential address? Quick yes and no answers. Um, and then you need to think about, really, you know, presumably you have already thought about where your charge point is going. Do you have permission um, to put it there? Um, do you have private off-street parking? Um, and so, you know, that your vehicle has access, you're going to have to describe that as well. Moving on through the form about the charge point itself. If you're going to get that EVHS grant scheme, needs to be a smart one, which means it needs to connect to the Wi-Fi, which means that you need to go to the place where that charge is going to be and check that it can connect to the Wi-Fi. Once you've done that, there's other questions. Like, have you got existing solar panels? I have. I had them installed at least 10 years ago, I think. We also need to check if there are any exposed metal fixtures near the charge, like taps or maybe light fittings. And they say within 50 feet, 15 meters of the charge point, um, they want to know what you've got because it may well interfere with the function. So again, photos are really useful at this point. Okay, so as you can see, a lovely picture of a fuse box here. What they need now is some photos to just assess and make a quote for you to see how that they how they can install that EV charge point. So they want a photo of your primary consumer unit. You'll recognize that. That's the fuse box. We've all got one of those. But some of us have actually got a second one. I had one in my garage. You know, if you've got any others, and I also, I want to take a photo of my solar panel gubbins is the technical term. Um, because I think at this stage, what they're looking for is as much information as they can get. Your incoming electricity supply probably looks something like that. So inside your meter cabinet, they need a photo of that. 
to does your incoming electricity supply have an isolation switch it's so funny isn't it because you go oh, i don't know the first mental process is i don't know how would i know what would i know about that um so trying to get up and out and into those cupboards with the cobwebs and see because you'll probably just find it's really straightforward and take the photos how many phases is your electricity supply i do know that because i was the one that renovated this house um, so I know that I have a three phase electricity supply if you don't know it you can skip that question and remember I said about ferreting around in the kitchen cupboards under the sink can you find the earth bonding a green wire attached to your water supply so it might be in your kitchen sink or wherever your water supply enters your house they want a photo of that too so while you're at it, now's the time for your sketch. So if we put down the basic shape of what's there already, so the wall and the doors and the pillars, where I'm thinking we can probably mount the charger and then what they're really interested in is the electrics. And then if I label it all up, they'll be able to see what it is and insert the other thing they're really interested in, which is the measurements. Now, where do you keep your electricity bill? <laughs> um, I told you, no sitting around on this in this one, um, because they needed an MPAN number, and that is the number found on your electricity bill. Um, so if you use online billing, you're going to have to download a bill and find it on there. But they want the top uh, eight digits of your MPAN number and the last 13 digits of your MPAN number filing cabinet. So that's the last thing uploaded. Finish and submit. Ah, you've done it. Now all you've got to do is sit and wait and then they will have all of the information that they need to assess and tell you what exactly they need to do to install your home charger and how much it's going to cost significantly. In the meantime, all you have to do is sit back and dream of a life truly off-grid. Hmm.